What is a cooperative and the seven cooperative principles? The International Cooperative Alliance, which is the, national, the international governing body for cooperatives, um, has defined a co-op as an autonomous association of persons united voluntarily to meet their common economic, social, cultural needs and aspirations through a jointly owned and democratically controlled enterprise. I want to point out some key points here in this particular definition. And again, I encourage you, if you can, to Google or go to ICA or the International Cooperative Alliance and read what they have about what a cooperative is because they do a nice job of really explaining it. So it's an association of autonomous individuals who come together to serve their mutual needs. Now those needs can also be economic needs, they can be social needs, they can grow, there are educational co-ops out there, they can be cultural needs, or, and they're also aspirations because they something is broken, something's not working correctly in the marketplace, and they have higher expectations than what's actually taking place. So um, if they're willing to invest their money and join a co-op, then they expect change to take place, and they have aspirations for that, and that's an important piece. The other point that I want to bring up today is the seven cooperative principles. You may or may not have heard of these seven principles, but uh, they date themselves back uh, to the, 18, uh, uh, the 19th century, in the middle of the 19th century during the Industrial Revolution, to jolly old England and a little, uh, some weavers cooperatives and a street called Toad Lane that took place. These weavers decided that their, that their employees uh, needed to have um, a, 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 who they were working together and, and they formed a co-op, but there needed to be some kind of governing guidelines or governing principles or governing aspirations. Those, these seven principles were actually created to kind of define how all co-ops uh, should operate and offer some guidance. And I would encourage at your co-op that you post these seven cooperative principles somewhere. The first of these co-op principles is that all cooperatives have voluntary and open membership. It's not like a union or a trade union that's a closed shop. If you become an employee of a particular place, then you have to join the union. Or you become a teacher and you have to join the teacher's union. But it's open. You can decide and choose truly voluntary whether you want to be a member of that or not. And it's voluntary. As long as you meet the uh, criteria for membership, Certainly, if you live outside the area that members can live, then uh, you can't be a member of that particular cooperative. But if, if you meet the criteria for membership, then it doesn't discriminate on race, creed, color, boundaries. Um, it can discriminate on what it, on the, the actual group itself. Uh, for example, the Dairy Farmers of America Marketing Cooperative. If I don't own any dairy cows, I can't be a member of the Dairy Farmers of America uh, Marketing Council because I don't have any milk to market, so there's some obvious things there. The second principle is democratic member control. This is very important because uh, in the investor-owned world, um, we generally use what I defer as the golden rule. The more gold you have, the more ownership you have of the business, the more you rule. Your stock weighs more if you have more of it. If you have 51% of the ownership in the particular business, then you can have control of that particular not so in a cooperative, because most cooperatives are actually uh, your vote for the board of directors, for the governing body of the cooperative, is based off of one member, one vote. It's a democratic vote. This changes everything, and it brings more power to more people and engages more people. That's why communication with all the people that engages is a very important and critical element in your cooperative. The third uh, cooperative principle is member economic participation. This is probably the most confusing element, uh, principle that's out there, because as a cooperative member, you have to have an economic pledge to your co-op. That can be as small as five dollars uh, in a savings account if you want to be a member of a local credit union, or it can be up to many th tens of thousands of dollars of investments for some of our larger ag supply co-ops. 
anything in between is appropriate. It's up to each board of directors and each uh, cooperative to determine what's appropriate for their member engagement. The other important point that's necessary to explain here is that that investment in your co-op is at the discretion of the board of directors of that particular co-op. It's if you decide to move or leave or end your relationship with the co-op, you can't just turn around and get your money back. Yes, it is your money. It does show up um, on the co-op's ledger as your money, but it's up to the board of directors to give it back and to return that to you when it's appropriate time. The co-op's strong enough and you can actually get your money back. Some co-ops I know have a very short uh, revolvement cycle, you know, four, five, seven years. Other co-ops, because of their longer-term investment or longer-term strategic planning, 30 or 40 years is very common. So your investment in those co-ops may, and your re uh, getting your money back from those co-ops could take a lot longer. The fourth cooperative principle is autonomy and independence. That merely says that every co-op is independent business of its own. Each member that uh, is a member of a co-op and each group of members that form a co-op is unique and that every co-op is also unique. And they can independently choose and decide how they want to govern themselves and how they want to serve their members' needs. The fifth cooperative principle is education, information, and training. Education is very, very important here because we have to educate the employees and educate the membership about the services that the co-op is giving, also educating them about the, the unique nature of the co-op and the power that that co-op offers them. The unique and, and excellent uh, and inspiring idea of the model itself. Um, training is important for every employee to know exactly how to do their job. There are some very technical co-ops, there are some very technical things that our co-op employees have to know so that they can serve their members best. And then we can do that both ethically, legally, and environmentally uh, uh, according to the regulations that are out there. So education, information, and training. The other information part of that education, uh, the fifth principle, is to make sure that the membership is informed. They're informed about all the policies, procedures that take place. Anything that they need to know in the arena that this co-op is operating in, it's important that the co-op be transparent and communicate that um, thoroughly to the membership. The sixth cooperative principle is, is cooperation among cooperatives. Sometimes this can be confusing because as a cooperative, you may be competing with other cooperative entities in your neighboring areas. But ultimately, as co-ops work together more, um, they can build uh, and serve the needs of their members more. Many co-ops look to other co-ops for their financing needs. Many co-ops look to insurance co-ops for their insurance and managing their risks or, or working in another arena. Or their health care. There are cooperative health cares out there and cooperatives are looking for that. So there are opportunities for co-ops to work with other co-ops to serve their needs cooperatively. And it's not, uh, it's very successful that the more information you have, the more you work with and uh, uh, with other cooperatives together and you communicate the interests of each co-op and the more you cooperate with each other that it does raise, uh, it, it does help explain uh, the, uh, the benefits of each and every member that's there. The seventh cooperative principle is concern for community. This is di also differentiates us from the investor-owned world because the owners of an investor-owned business may live hundreds or thousands of miles away from where the business is actually being conducted. They may not really know any of the details about what's taking place or what the needs are of that particular community. So to have a co-op that's rooted in the community where the, the equity and the the financial base comes from the membership for them to be tied back to their local community is a very important concept and having concern for that and giving back to that community is a very important piece so that they can serve, they know the needs of their local communities, they can serve those unique needs in a very healthy way. So it's important that the seven cooperative principles uh, in, encompass a very broad range of policies that all co-ops share. Uh, and that uh, 
let me read back through their first cooperatives of voluntary and open membership. Number two is democratic member control. Number three is member economic participation so that every member has an economic ownership piece of their co-op. Four is autonomy and independence in that every co-op is uniquely independent of its own. Five is education, training, and information so that not only are the member owners educated and trained, but also the employees of their co-ops and the management team is adequately educated and trained, not only about their needs to do their job, but also about cooperatives themselves. Five is cooperation among cooperatives, identifying that the more we pull together and work together, the stronger we can all be and the more power we ultimately have in the marketplace. And the seventh principle is concern for community. 